Because you might see people on Instagram and you might see these celebrities with all this money that they have and all this clout and influence that they have perpetuating this idea that you don't need to be married or that it's okay, it's not that hard to be a single mom. Bitch, they lied. I'm telling you right now. They lied to your face. See, I, I knew somebody was going to start their car right when I got ready to start filming. Hey you guys, welcome and welcome back to Mom Jeans by Nutcase. Thank you so much for being here. I have another set of tips for you guys and this one is a little bit more personal because we gotta get into this conversation of why nobody is talking about the real deal of having kids. Especially amongst the black community, especially with black women, especially with black girls. So I've got five things that you need to know and consider. Five things. This is a hard five. I need you to really pay attention before you decide to have kids, especially if you are a woman, especially if you are a black woman, because the misconceptions are way too deep. I know you've been lied to. I know you've been bamboozled. I know that you've been tricked into thinking that it's something so glamorous and beautiful and it's just gonna be outfits and cute stuff, but I'm about to tell you the truth, okay? And if you wanna get a more personal look into my experience as a single mother or as a mom and giving you more more insight into why you should consider these things be sure to check out my video with the thumbnail that says caution that I made previously about this topic where I go more in depth and I talk a little bit more about personal experience let's go ahead and get into these five things that you need to consider before you decide to have kids to be honest with you all of these things are equally important but I had to number them so we could have a nice structure the fifth thing that you need to consider before you have children is your freedom honey okay because it's gonna be gone you ain't gonna have no freedom when you have these kids have you really done all the things that you want to do this is what you need to be asking yourself it's not about like what other people think or what other people want but like really for you have you done all of the things that you want to do in your life things that you have maybe on your bucket list or travel that you may have dreamed of being able to partake in places you've wanted to go things you've wanted to see different experiences that you've wanted to have before you have that child have you done all those things are you good have you crossed it all off the list because then boo don't let me stop you okay but if not then you may want to consider doing those things first before you bring a child into the world because once you bring that child into the world you literally do not have any freedom your life is not your life it's not you don't have any time for yourself and it might seem like you're gonna have all these friends and all these family members that want to help you with your kid but when it comes down to it that's not really what happens like that's not really the reality of the situation a lot of times people don't want to watch your child for you they don't want to babysit sometimes you you may even be paranoid and not want to leave your child with certain people because you know how they are and you know what could possibly happen if your child is left in their care so fifth and not least important, but first that we're gonna talk about is consider your freedom and whether or not you're ready to sacrifice it. Okay, so let's keep this ball rolling. The fourth thing that you need to consider you guys before having kids is your motivation. Why are you having these kids? Why do you wanna have this baby? What is your motivation? What is the real reason that you're considering bringing this child into the world? Because there's a lot of reasons that are extremely selfish that you will find once you have that child really negate all of the dreams or illusions or imaginary thoughts that you may have had about having that child. 
Have you dealt with your trauma? Because this leads you to understand what motive you have for having a child and it helps you to really identify if that motive is something that's really beneficial to a small life coming into the world. Because if you haven't dealt with your trauma and you haven't dealt with your baggage, you could very well be wanting to have a child to fill a void of something that you need to deal with that that child is not gonna be able to fill and nor is it their responsibility. Like for example, with me, when I had my son, Son, my first son, I felt a void when it came to my family. I felt like I didn't have a close-knit family or I felt like I didn't have a good relationship with my family, which is a horrible reason to bring a child into the world because family is the main thing that helps to support that young life. And because of the fact that I lost my mom at a young age, I was 13 years old, so I lost my mom at a really, really vulnerable age. And I wasn't feeling as supported as I would have liked to feel when it came down to the family around me and the people around me that I was trying to create my own family and that's not horrible I definitely feel that if you've had that type of experience that it's admirable to want to create your own family but the time that you do it or when you decide to do it along with how far you've been able to come in your life emotionally mentally physically psychologically and spiritually is something that you have to take into account because that child is not gonna fill any voids that child is not going to heal any wounds it's gonna just create more that you have to deal with along with the things that you already haven't dealt with so you have to really be clear on your motivation for why you want to have this child now that brings us to our third thing i guess what are we calling these things things the third thing that you should consider before having this child is money what they say money 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 is that what they say? Now, I put this as the third thing because the two other things that are more, to me, more serious than this are like close. Like top three is like neck and neck, bitch. It's neck and neck. So I feel like if you don't have the funds, you really need to consider whether or not you should be having a child. And this goes for anybody. This goes for any human, okay? But it really goes for you as a woman, you as a mother, or soon to be mother, or prospective mother, especially you as a black woman, okay? Do you have the money to do everything for this child that they need? Because the baby just don't sit there like a dog. It's different. Do you have the financial capability to provide for this child? And I'm not talking about somebody else's money. Count your own money first. I'm talking about you. Do you have the financial capability to provide for this child? This means food, this means clothes, this means toys, engagement or enrichment activities. This means childcare. Okay, I almost jump on childcare. Okay, it's, it's, real, it's real deep in my soul because before you had kids, don't nobody tell you how expensive it is to drop that baby at daycare, okay? Now I was gonna include a screenshot of the year that I spent over $13,000 on daycare for y'all, but I couldn't find a piece of paper, so y'all gonna have to just take my word for it. <laughs> it's expensive and if you want a daycare that's actually quality where the people aren't gonna be abusing your child or the people are not gonna be neglecting your child then you gonna be paying and not only that but living arrangements where y'all gonna live do you have the finances to be able to support living somewhere where that child can be in a good school district where that child does not have to worry about being in a dangerous neighborhood and all this takes money okay these are the things that you have to consider before you get into a situation because just looking at how much a stroller costs or a car seat or looking at how much baby clothes cost is not not really giving you a good idea of the long-term financial obligation that you are gonna have when you have that child. Long-term financial obligations are a lot larger than the short-term financial obligations. Those baby clothes and those newborn outfits, zero to three months, six to eight months, whatever you're looking at is gonna be grown out of very quickly. Those little small little baby shoes that might be 45 to $80, they gonna grow out of them real quick. Then you're gonna be mad. Then you're gonna be mad because you spent $80 on a pair of baby shoes that they only wore like once or twice and didn't even walk in them. And then every time you put the baby shoes on, they just kick them off because they little feet, they do that. They little feet, they just boop, boop, pop them right off. Boop, boop, pop, boop, gone. Shoe gone. Don't know where the shoe went. It's gone. You done paid $80 for a shoe and that motherfucker in the park somewhere. Don't know where the fuck it went. Dog done picked it up and chewed it up and ran away. Play fetch with your baby shoe, okay? It happens, I'm just saying. And those are the things that you have to consider because the amount of like money that you're gonna end up spending in the long run, it's like consistent, it's constant. You never know when that baby's gonna need medication, fever medication, Tylenol, Motrin. You never know when you're gonna have to go to the hospital because somebody got a broken arm or broken leg. You never know when somebody might get a rash at school. You don't know where it came from, but the motherfucker is sick. And you gotta take 
take care of it. Then you turn around and six months into the school year, the clothes that you bought that was fitting right and a little too big, all of a sudden now they high waters. What you gonna do in the middle of the year when you ain't got no tax money? I'm just saying. These are valid questions that you should be asking yourself before you have this child. And I think that, you know, as black women especially, it's not talked about enough within our community. And this is what you need to know, baby girl, especially if you're one of those girls who are right now in your teenage years, you might be 14, 15, 16, maybe even younger, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, just keep counting. You might be in college. You might be a young adult, maybe somebody who's going into exploring your options, trying to figure out what you want to do in your life. And it just takes a lot. It takes a lot to have a child. Now, that brings us to our second consideration before you have a child, which is the co-parent. And I cannot speak enough about it. Like there, there's not even, there's not enough time. I don't have enough memory on my phone to speak about how important it is to really consider the person who you're having a child with. Are you willing to be attached to this person for the rest of your life? Because it's not just living with this person for the rest of your life, or you know, seeing this person for the rest of your life. It's literally having a soul tie with this other person for the rest of your life. Because having a child is considered in a lot of cultures to be a blood ritual. So if you don't know anything about spell work and how people can be connected through different bonds and contracts and ties, then you might want to look into that. But a lot of the trauma that we have within the black community is the fact that we don't understand how these ties are intertwined and connected and we don't understand how deep it goes when we do certain things that we do. For example, getting somebody's name tattooed on you, let somebody do something crazy like spit in your mouth. Letting people, when you're intimate and you're having intercourse with a person, say, oh, this is mine, or telling you to say that it's theirs, and all of these things are rituals. So having a baby is a ritual too. When it comes down to it, you're combining your DNA, your blood, with another person, another human's DNA and blood, which means you're tying the bloodlines together, which means this child is not only gonna bear certain trauma or past life knowledge through your DNA from your own family lineage, but they're also gonna bear it from this person. So if this is not a satisfactory person or this is not a person who you wanna be connected by blood to for the rest of your life, then you might wanna consider whether or not you should really be having a child with them. Like, is this somebody who you really wanna deal with? Because a lot of people out here are having kids these days to trap people. And I'm not saying like you're being malicious, but you know, some folks are being malicious. There's men out here trying to trap women. There's women out here trying to trap men. And you as a young woman need to make sure that you're being very cognizant of the type of energy that you're allowing not only to come into your body, but the type of energy that you're allowing to be perpetuated through the portal, which is your womb. I'm just saying, we got it. I didn't know these things. I had my first child when I was 17. Am I lying? Yes, I am. I was pregnant at 17. I had my first child when I was 18, second child when I was 19. And this man, for the last 12 years, my oldest son is 12 years old. He's about to be 13. For the last 12 years, this man has been consistently trying to cause blockages and create manipulative situations in my life to where I cannot be released from whatever the fuck he's got going on in terms of his own life and the that he doesn't want to deal with, okay? And these are the bonds that you have to be very careful about. Not only because you are a woman and because you can bring life into this world through the portal, which is your womb, but also because you are a black woman, which means that you have different qualities in your DNA that make your blood and your cells more valuable in this world. You have to be careful. You have to be cognizant of who you are connecting yourself with and bonding yourself to in that way because even if you don't end up with that person for the rest of your life you're going to be bonded to that person for the rest of your life and i f***ed up twice got three kids an ex-husband and a baby daddy think about it that's all i'm saying now that brings us to our number one most important consideration to consider before you have these kids are you ready to be a single parent because as they say mama's baby daddy's maybe Ooh. So baby girl, are you ready to be a single mom? Because you might see people on Instagram and you might see these celebrities with all this money that they have and all this clout and influence that they have perpetuating this idea that you don't need to be married or that it's okay, it's not that hard to be a single mom. They lied, I'm telling you right now. They lied to your face. Because whatever they're peddling and pushing and selling, they want you to buy.
That's why they lied to your face. And I'm here to tell you the truth. TT finna tell you the truth. It is not the way that you think it is. The way that these social media influencers and these girls out here on Instagram and these celebrities are out here popping out these kids like single parenthood is fun. It's not fun. It's tiring and it's exhausting and it's annoying and it's something that's gonna try your patience every single day that you wake up to the point where you gonna be wanting to stay in the bed. And I don't mean stay in the bed like go back to sleep. I mean not wake up, period. Single motherhood and parenthood takes a lot out of you and I don't condone violence or self-deletion. And if you are having those thoughts, please be sure to contact someone and call a line, the self-deletion prevention line, whatever it is that you have to do to talk to somebody, right? But there have been many times where I've questioned whether or not it's sustainable for me to live my life being a single mom. And a lot of people don't talk about this. And that's exactly why I made this video. Because people like to talk about, oh, I'm so tired, I'm so exhausted. And that's a part of it because that's a part of being a single parent. You have to wake up every single day and do for those kids. You have to be up all day creating whatever type of income that you create, whether it be through entrepreneurship, your business, or working for like a company, maybe both. And then when you come home and you're done with that, you still have to make sure that everybody's on task, homework is done, people are fed. You get a little and that's something that I don't want you to fall into because if you have a realistic expectation of what parenthood is, then you'll be able to understand whether or not mentally and physically, emotionally and spiritually that you'll be able to handle that task. And if you're somebody who deals with any type of emotional or psychological issues, you may really want to consider whether or not you have the ability to have a child at this time, especially if there's any chance or risk that you'll be raising that child alone. Are you ready to be a single parent? That is the number one thing that you need to consider because nobody is obligated or required to stay in your life. Even though it may seem nice and even though it is true that you didn't create this child by yourself, it's also true that people are going to do whatever the they want to do. They're going to do whatever they want to do, honey. They are not necessarily going to be the way that they say they're going to be and they're not necessarily going to do what's right. So especially if you are a woman, especially if you are a black woman and the fact that if you're dating a black man or if you're... It, anybody it doesn't matter what race really but you know a lot of you are interested in black men and that's a problem because a lot of black men are really really not healed and it doesn't get any better as they get older because the younger you are you think oh as they get older they're gonna get more mature honey I'm 30 they're still children okay they're still little boom boom babies with the diapers on and the pull-ups and they need some huggies I'm just letting you know right now so in order to make sure that you are fully prepared you have to consider that you might be doing this by yourself are you ready to do this so if you've considered all these five things and you still want to have a child, I bless you. I really do because you can do it, honestly. If you're already in this predicament and you're a single mom or you already have a child or you're pregnant, you can do it. Be encouraged, but just be realistic. Be logical and not simply emotional. Be logical and optimistic, but also be practical in all the things that I said because it takes a lot for you to have the strength and keep the strength that you need to raise children. It's not something that's easy. So I really do hope that this video was able to help you guys have a more clear understanding about the topic as a whole. And if you have anything you would like to add as a single mom for the ladies, for the girlies to know please do not hesitate to put it in the comments I want to hear from you guys as far as some other things that you may think of that I didn't mention that should be considered before having a child share your knowledge I hope you guys enjoyed it once again I cannot wait to read your comments or see what you guys have to say about this if there's anything else that you guys want me to talk about just based on what I've been through or based on my experience feel free to also leave that as a comment below as always you guys remember to subscribe to the channel especially if you're new be sure to like the video you guys and be sure to have post notifications turned on so you can be caught up every time I post honey and remember that's why they call them mom jeans because everybody can't fit in them boo bye